Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. Hello, my name is Clive O'Fly, and I'm the daughter of the UK, and welcome to the studio. Yes, yeah, thank you for taking up my invitation. Now, I was thinking of doing another skill lesson today because we did one a couple of weeks ago of the sphere, and I thought it would be a good idea because I was on holiday the other week, and I was doing a little bit of sketching, as you can see. Yes, I got one of these little sketchbooks, and I was doing like cloud study, and um, I was doing a tonal value study, and I thought it would be a good idea if I actually brought that to canvas. So putting that to one side, um, and it's always handy to have a little sketchbook. Um, I'm actually going to get some made, and they will be available on the website if you want to pop along and purchase those. But I, I will be getting them made in the next couple of weeks, and they're all recyclable, recyclable bulls. Yes, everything is recyclable. It's all been, um, you know, what do you mean? It's all just been recycled, basically. Okay, we're not talking about that. What's under the wet palette today? Well, we've got some basic colours there. We've got an ultramarine blue, a titanium white, and a Mars black. That's all I'm using. I've got my little pot there with some medium mix. I'm just going to thin that down a touch with a little bit of water. And that's all the moisture I'm going to be using today. Um, and that's it, really. I've got my fine mist bottle in case I need it. And so let's get painting. So I've just picked up uh, a couple of brushes. And um, as you can see, I've got a little short flat, which is a three quarter. And I've also got another little half short flat. That's all the brushes I'm going to use today. And I got some kitchen roll in my hand. Okay. So as you know, I'm going to moisten those brushes because I want, don't want them to suck the paint the moisture out of the paint. So I always moisten my brushes first. There we go. Now, let's have a look. What can we do? Um, I think it'd be a good idea if I got some gesso. Now, I use one of these little wax papers. So let's just put a little bit of homemade. This is homemade gesso. It's not shop bought gesso. It's homemade gesso. And I'm just going to put a little bit of gesso just on the canvas like that. The reason I do this is because it's going to be a lot easier for me to actually blend on there. So I'm only going to go down so far. Now, as a beginner, if you want to use gesso for blending, um, I suggest you use just a section at a time. Otherwise, if you're not used to this drying on you, you're going to have difficulties. So all I'm going to do is do that for the moment. There, like that. I'm going to get my fine mist atomizer and I'm just going to spray that and I want to keep that moist. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to keep it working. There you go. So if you're in a dry environment you need to mist down quite regular. Okay so all I'm going to do is mix a little bit of black and a little bit of ultramarine blue together like that. So we've got a nice blue. It's like a Payne's grey then. There you go. Put a bit by there, and I'm going to put a bit by there. Wash my brush very, very quickly. And pick up a bit of titanium white. And I just want to go into the one side of that. I don't want this too dark. There we are, we've got a bit of a, a colour going on there. And let's just put a little bit of, let's maybe add a little bit more black to that. Let's grade up a bit more. There we are. That's better. Think. Use that. Remember we, we, we did that sphere the other week. Well, it's like cutting it down, opening it out. And, and you can see the grayscale stick that I've got on the left-hand side of my canvas. Maybe a good idea if you've tried to make one of those. So let's just put a little bit of colour. It's not dark enough, so just play around with it until you find that tone you were looking for. And that's all I'm doing, is trying to find a nice tone. I don't want it too dark, but I want a definite difference. There you go. And then just bring that down like that. Blend that straight in to the gesso. There you go. So we've got a little bit of a, a discoloration there. That's all that we are looking for. How is that looking? Is it too bright? I ask myself. It should be okay. I think you. I think you can see that. All right. I got a bit of a bright spot on my canvas there. It's 
blend that in get that color to come down like that it's a little bit of dark coming off my brush so let's just keep rubbing it and rubbing it the more you rub it the more it'll blend in that's the first part there you go that's the first part you want to worry about get a little bit of moisture on that brush and just let's just blend that through like that and that's the easiest way that I found of getting that blend in this is going to be the sky that blend in the sky there okay now let's get a little bit more titanium white let's darken up this color let's just try that yeah that's about the right color I'm gonna put that brush straight in the pot and picking up my smaller brush mixing up a little bit more paint till I get that tone I want okay so first thing we gotta do is just use the corner of the brush and just do a couple of little circular patterns like that like as if it's really distant trees or something or you can put you can put foot heels in if you wanted to but I will I'm gonna work on trees just patterns just patterns like that just you just barely see this color you just barely see the blend that in Do you remember what I said with the other with the sphere and if, if you don't know what I'm talking about as far as that lesson is concerned if you press the i-card there it'll actually be in there and it'll be called sphere so you just blend that in try and maintain those shapes because they're important just blend that in like that try and make it look distant if you want a little bit dark like I have then just take that up a little bit more blend that into the, the gesso and the, the other color that we put in and you just want a very light a light effect there can just about barely just see that there we are let's just bring a little bit of gesso down into that now my canvas is dry I can feel my my brush dragging so what I suggest you do is moisten down the bottom of your canvas and with these mister bottles if they do start to stick you can take that off wash that out there with some warm water on there and then you put that back on or give it a rinse out in your little pot and guess what it'll work again because what happens is it gets stuck little bits of water will will congeal with 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 the mist and and all the dirt and you'd be surprised how much dirt and grime can get in there so every so often take it off like that give it a little rinse and give it a wash and it'll work fine there you go that's if you have any problems i've had that in the studio for nearly two years now and it's still working really well with me I know I have a couple of you that said hey Clive my Mr. Bottle have stopped working and that's 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 the main reason is it gets sometimes there's a little bit of grit or something gets in there so you need to you need to wash it out you certainly do we're not here to talk about the fine Mr. Bottles that, are, that I sell on the website so let's just get on to this painting now going back to our, our study we need to come forward now so we need to darken our color up just a touch more let's get a bit of this color let's darken that up a touch more just try it yeah there's enough enough of a difference there enough of a difference and then come in a little bit darker Clive play 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 you don't know until you start to, to play with this Donald don't damage that keep an a layer in front of that but it's got to be darker otherwise the effect we are looking for is not going to work and this is practice this is a skill lesson that's all this is is a skill lesson gone a little bit dark there again but don't worry if you've gone a little bit dark just bring a little bit of titanium white onto your brush mix it in like that and get it looking like as if it's some sort of tree or bushes or it doesn't really matter does it this is a skill test this is to show you how landscapes are built and it's a tonal tonal um, lesson that I've been working on as I said I just had a sketchbook with me when I was down in West Wales and I thought oh I know I'll do a couple of 
skill lesson. So we'll be taking this lesson on to clouds on the next one. So we'll be looking at clouds. But for the moment, let's just look at building up some sort of a, a value landscape. Uh, so what do we want to call it? A value landscape. There we are. That's, that's a good thing to call it, I think. It's a good name. Glad I thought of that. <laughs> a little bit of a mist. I've been asked about the fine mist bottle and, the, and, and I've said, um, you know, can I use a, an ordinary spritzer bottle? A spritzer bottle has got a slightly bigger hole. I've mentioned this before. It, the, the spray doesn't come out as fine. You really want an atomizer spray. Um, as I said, you can purchase one of these from the website or you can just see if you can locate one where you live. Yes, but an atomizer is the way to go. There we are. So we've come, we've done the background, which is the sky, and we've come forward a little bit. We've got one layer there. We've got another layer there, again, which is slightly darker. Um, so let's go in and let's darken up the next level now. There we go. Let's mix a little bit more black and blue together. A bit of a Payne's grey. There we are. How's that? Is that too dark? It is a little bit too dark, that one. So we'll just add a bit more white. Play with the colours and until you start mixing and finding out what colour works where. This is what this is about. This is about skill. This is about learning. It's not about painting a painting. It certainly isn't. It's about learning how to how are we looking <laughs> it's about learning value it's about learning value and this is a good way to actually learn some sort of a value scale without doing and boring yourself making just sticks that go down in gradients like my grayscale stick there we're playing with a little bit of a landscape effect and i've done a similar type of thing before with this it may be a little bit too dark but it doesn't matter we'll go we'll go in with that that's fine it doesn't matter Put a couple of little bushes on one thing or another, and then just brush that in like that. Get that like that. There we go. That's nice. There we go. You can see what's happening. You can see the stages now. You can see there's three definite stages of value and distance. It's already looking as if it's starting to recede into the background by just playing with different values of colour. And then just bring that down like that. And what we can do, I'm going to just put, put that in there in a minute. What we can do, we can get a blending brush. And um, I suggest you go and purchase um, a pony hair blending brush. They're going to have some of these on the website shortly. So they're going to be there as well. But for the moment, I, I'm waiting for them to be sorted. <laughs> it's just very, very lightly. And the pressure you need to do is just very, very, just tickle the back of your hand like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. On the canvas you need to just very very lightly look very very lightly that's the pressure we're looking for and that's when we say one hair and no hair that's exactly what we're doing we are just caressing our canvas you've heard that on other tv programs and videos but that's that's the pressure you want but nobody tells you nobody shows you that pressure so i thought i'd show you i'd show you the pressure you need and just very very lightly just very very lightly just caress that canvas like that we want very very little pressure very very little pressure there you go there you go that's all you want to do let's just brush that there's not much paint on there there's not a lot of paint on it we don't want it to dry okay so you need to make sure that's all off there if you can there you go put that there let's get back into our little brush where's my bin there it is and i'm going to get a bit more kitchen roll Again, picking up my brush, my little um, half inch short flat. Got something in my eye. Yes. Okay, let's darken that up again. We can virtually go into that colour now, actually, just to look at it. Yes, yeah, that's okay. We'll go into that colour now. And then we'll, we'll put in these a little bit bigger this time. That's automatically, automatically going to pick up the colour from there. Because it's going to it's going to lighten itself automatically, but you want enough of a difference. It doesn't matter about the shapes. It don't worry about shapes. This is more about looking at distance and and and, and knowing how values work. And if you know how values work, you can develop 
depth in the painting and this is what we're trying to do today is develop depth in the painting but we're also practicing blending as well yes also practicing blending today now I'm gonna go a definite shade darker on the next one there you go blend that down just get used to the paint move the paint get the paint to move for you use the edge corner of the brush this time and just try and bleed that in like that just get the definite definite shapes yeah, well, picking up a blending brush again again very very light pressure very very light tickling the back of your hand hardly touching this canvas just, just acrylic paint wants to slide use the slide to your advantage use the use the disadvantages of acrylic to your advantage and then you will never go wrong that's what a lot of people don't do they don't use it the disadvantages to their advantage and this is what I try to teach is that now getting a bit of Mars black and again a bit more ultramarine blue I'm gonna bring a little bit more white to that I want to go a little bit lighter there let's have a look I want this to be definite difference now there we are a little bit more white and again scrubbing that in use an old brush don't you don't use good brushes like me <laughs> I ruin so many brushes but that's just me I enjoy painting and I enjoy teaching as well and I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased that you actually come and join me in the studio today because it's nice to learn from different things and this is definitely one of those things that we can learn from and by doing things like this when we go and do the clouds one you will find it so easy because you've done a sphere and now you're doing a tonal painting to give you depth you can see the depth but again you have already created a value scale like that but you're doing it on a flat canvas this time last time we did it we did it in a sphere now we're doing it on a whole canvas and this is a 15 by 12 canvas um, it can be a canvas it can be a canvas board it can be a masonette it can be whatever you want it to be it doesn't matter I paint on canvases because I've got a lot of canvases in the studio and it's stupid not to use them <laughs> so and I get them really cheap yes these are not expensive canvases these are bought from a bargain store and I think this one was only 99 pence so I can afford to paint this what I'll do with this I'll paint this on this and I'll most probably throw it away <laughs> so there we are that's what play does yes I don't keep many paintings these days because I got so many and I'm going to start selling things a bit more now because the summer's come in and I can, I'm a, I can get out and do a little bit of plein air painting I'll be taking some paintings with me and um, I sell some on the streets and I've got some craft fairs to go to and you know where's my bin there it is so and you do the same if, if money is your thing then do that I think it's important that we do that and it covers the cost of materials that's all yes because materials are very expensive so I'm going to go in now I'm just going to get a bit of Mars black this time and I'm just going to darken that up and um, I'm just going to finish the bottom section now and I'm just going to plod, plod in, just plod in another series of bush type things. I don't know. It doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter what they are. All we're doing is developing a value painting, a tonal painting, and we're learning at the same time about how the paint moves, how it slides on itself. And believe it or not, it's still wet. So people say, Critics dry really fast. Well, they do. If you know how the paint dries, if you're in a dry environment, then you need to put a little bit of moisture in the air. Um, I, I forget what they call those things. <laughs> if you're in a dry environment, then that's a good thing to do. If, if, you're, if, if you're in a very humid environment, you need to pull the moisture out of the air. You need to dehumidify the air. I got a dehumidifier in here. It sucks all the moisture out. So the air is dry. Um, and that helps my paintings as well because it can get quite um, the humidity in the studio can get quite ho quite high so I pull the humidity out I think it's is it a humidifier and a dehumidifier there we are so whatever v environment you're in 
I would, I would suggest you invest in one of those for the studio. So if it's very, very hot and dry, you want to put, you want to get something, I'm just, just going straight into black, you want to get something to put a little bit of moisture in the air. The paint is going to evaporate in a dry environment. Acrylic paint's got a lot of water in it. And acrylic paint dries rapidly in that situation. So if you've got a little bit of moisture in the air, if the air is a little bit more humid, if it's a humidity is a bit more humidity in the air, then the paint's going to take longer to dry, and that's the key. But if you've got a very damp environment, which is not a bad thing, if the, if the humidity is very high, then you can pull some of that out, or you can use it to its advantage, because acrylic paint won't dry out as quick in that environment. So there's a couple of little lessons there for you today. But if other than that, just keep using this fine mist atomizer bottle. There you go, you can just use one of them and you can just keep misting down your, your canvas like that. Or you, don't forget you can mist your new paints as well. Always use a wet palette because that keeps your paints from drying out because they don't dry out from underneath and they won't dry out from the top if you mist them. And that is as simple as that. So we have developed a really nice depth of, um, it's just showing you a tonal depth of a landscape um, by using simple shapes. Um, and not representing anything and we've gone from a very light background right through into different levels and different stages like we did on the sphere but this is on a, on a flat surface now and this is showing you depth so you can see the further away things are a little, little, there's a little bit more cooler a little bit more bluer okay that's why I added blue to my Mars black I didn't want to do a gray scale I wanted to do a Payne's gray Payne's gray is more of a blue black so the further things are, the more bluer, cooler they are. Now always remember that, that's an, that's an underlining lesson on this lesson. That's why I use paint grey instead of just black. I need to reiterate some things. So have a go, let me know how you get on. This is um, a, another lesson, as I said, if you want to see the sphere one, please click in there. And there's another list, uh, playlist in there, so just tap your screen on an iPad iPhone or a smartphone a little eye will pop up if you're on a PC just click your mouse and you'll see a little eye card up there and there are annotations on these videos as well if you're on the PC so my name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk have a good day good week a good month a good year because I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this as time is relative on YouTube and um, God bless and I wish you in the next one nice <laughs>